Hey guys, uh, it's Michael here. I'm just going to tell you a bit about my current situation. I'll just jump straight into it. Um, there's a bit of a disagreement in my family, especially with my sister, who, um, you know, she believes that I need to be on medication for a medical mm, health, psychological thing. And she took me to the psychologist. Um, she took me to the psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist said, oh, you know, Michael may have psychosis, none otherwise specified. He may also have bipolar type 2, or he may have schizoaffective disorder. And, you know, I went along and followed the psychiatrist. Um, I told them about my uh, spiritual religious journeys and my, uh, I guess you call hypomanic episodes uh, it just you know I took the medication he didn't really seem to be that invested or interested in my uh, journey I think he just needed the money to get paid and after that I after like three months I tried calling the psychiatrist and he said you know just talk to the GP and I thought like what would the GP know I so I just stopped taking the medication altogether and then I actually lied about it to my family. I was just pretending to take it. <clears throat> it was a bit of a strange situation because, you know, uh, my sister's going through a divorce at the moment and she's really private about it. But, you know, I have to like find a way to express myself. I need to explain it on here or something uh, so I can try to make sense of what's going on. Um, I've been talking to the psychiatrist, the psych I mean, I've been calling mental health line, men's health and uh, lifeline and all and beyond blue and to be honest, uh, they haven't actually helped me. Um, they were just kind of, uh, one person's like, I'll oh, call this person, the other person's like, call the psychologist and the psychologist's like, I'll oh, talk to the doctor and the doctor's like, talk to the psychiatrist and it's just like, the psychiatrist's like, oh, I'll go talk to Centrelink and I mean, that's not exactly what happened, but I'm just saying, like, one person says to go to that person, that person says to go to that person, that person says to go to that person, and it's just fucking, you know, if mental health is, if my mental health is such a giant, huge issue, I would be getting immediate assistance, so I just, you know, this is my um, assistance to myself, and I've just, um, I've actually got a painting at the back. <laughs> And I have to put it back up. It's really making me OCD. It's like this thing I got at Kmart. Uh, I mean, Ikea. Uh, this thing. I think I'll just... Um, yeah, I think I'll just leave it over here. So... Hopefully there's no weird vibration sound coming from these uh, this microphone over here. Um, I'm trying to not show it in the screen, but it's kind of hard. I'll just point it upwards. But yeah, I really apologise if that microphone is making weird um, buzzing sounds. It's because I don't know how to use a microphone and connect it. I actually, I do. Like, I can make music and stuff and... This doesn't happen because I connect it to that over there. So anyway, let's go back to the topic. So um, I do feel like my sister is using emotion as a kind of, I guess, a guilt tool, a shame tool, a, a manipulative tool. She's an ESFJ, I'm an ENTP. And she's like, oh, you know, you're hurtful with your words and you're, um, you're offending me and... Da, 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 da. And like it, it really blocks any anything to have an open conversation. It really blocks. Um, it sorry. It really blocks all um, ability to have an open conversation. Logical. She runs on um, emotions and systems, and I and and rules and sentimentality. I run on ideas, expression, truth, justice, reality, and logic. And logic and openness really comes to a heads with emotions and rules. Because, you know, 
you can't break the rules of politeness. And when those rules are broken, it's because uh, I'm having a manic episode or I'm having a, bi a bipolar situation. And she'll say things like, you know, this is not the Michael we know and love when he says these things about, oh, you chose your husband. But, you know, it's really upsetting to me that I can't really express myself. And when I do express myself, it's, it's accused of being bipolar. I think um, I have every right to express my opinions. And I, and I feel like this house, unfortunately, it suppresses freedom of speech. And if I brought it up, it would be denied. It'd be like, oh, no, you can say whatever you like. But then when I do say whatever I like, it's, uh, this is what happens. I get accused of having some uh, mental issue. And, um, you know, I'm just a man. I'm just a male. And my sister says she's afraid because, you know, I've uh, had fights with her in the past. But, you know, when I was a kid, she used to pinch me. When I was a kid, my dad used to hit me. So my dad also, also encouraged me to hit kids to stand up for myself. So it's not like the violence started with me the violence actually started with them my grandfather hit my dad with a stick and he injured his knee and when my dad brought it up when on my grandfather's deathbed he cried and said sorry i didn't even know i did that so i feel like it's not a mental condition that creates violence it's actually systemic and you know i am not a violent person but i have resorted to hitting the walls and hitting the car and I don't think that should be blamed on bipolar disorder and you know I have been seeking assistance I have been going to the psychologist but the psychologist just said I had anxiety and then the psychiatrist just said go take lithium and then you know and then the counselor said oh go talk to go go to your GP and get a mental health plan which I've done so you know it's not like I haven't tried to work on my mental health and I find it quite I guess it's it's quite exhausting, it's quite stressful, you know, um, sometimes I just don't even want to care about my mental health, like, I have so many goals in life, I want to start a business, I want to work, I want to make money, I want to, you know, I do also want to see my friends, and I realise how important friendship is, but I also have been hyper-focused on career, you know, I want to make sales, I want to make money, I've been applying for jobs, I've been calling up places, have you received my email, have you received my phone call, I'm going to, can I call in three days, because to check if I've re if you've confirmed if I've gotten the job, can you let me know in, in three days, how long will it be, um, could you let the, could you let your Sydney office know, because I'm in Melbourne, because people will like make a whole heap of reasons, like our office is over in Sydney, I will let you know, we'll let you know, we'll let you know, I'll be, okay, well can you let me know today, in a few hours, can you let me know in three days, I am super hyper focused, like I'm going to get that goal no matter what, and that create, that does create a lot of stress, but you know, according to people who do need to achieve things, you have to block out a lot of things and it creates a lot of chaos, and I'm trying to order this world, and you know, my sister being the ESFJ, the console, um, she orders her world as much as I order my world and we just like clash heads with each other and I like ha was threatening to move out to my own self I really wanted and I think you know I actually do think I need to move out um that's one of the answers um psychology sure you know what whatever I've been reading Carl Jung I've been reading Nietzsche I've been looking at like um the, the power of good and evil beyond good and evil I've been reading Jordan Peterson I read so much I've been you know I've probably watched more than 15 hours of Jordan Peterson's content I've finished 260 pages of his book I don't know like I'm up to rule 11 I've done a lot of stuff and I think I need to give myself credit um it's just so I think it's ridiculous to just blame it on oh you have bipolar go fix that go take it it's a, you've got a medical issue I think it's an existential issue. I think it's a whole life situation issue. I think it's beyond just a medical thing when you put a, a pill in your body. And I, I'm afraid that, like, you know, my sister's in denial. She picked that husband. And I hope he doesn't hear this, or maybe he will, but whatever. But, like, no, everyone saw that he was treating her like shit. So many people. Like, uh, my friend in the UK, my family friend, I saw it. I told her to leave him. And then he proposed to her the next day, like in 2011. In 2011, I went to his brother-in-law, uh, my brother-in-law's party, and then I said, you know, leave him, break up. And then she was crying in the bathrooms, like hysterical. She was crazy. Mm. And then 
she had like from 2013 onwards every year after that she had been jumping in back to my house back to the family house 2014 she came back to the house after getting married 2015 she came back to the house like every year there was a reason to come back to the house and she had to keep going in and out in and out in and out and I said you know why don't you just leave him and she's like oh you know I love him he's special he's important and there's a bunch of crazy people outside um beeping each other because Melbourne is full of lunatics and psychotic drivers on the road and there was a psychotic driver who almost killed me while I was driving he hit into me I was going forwards and he was going this way and he just I was going 70 k's and he slammed into me and I had to slam my brakes and I was this close that close to him and then I beeped him and then he was insulted by the fact that I beeped him and then so he tried to knock into me again so clearly um, you need to stop smoking meth and crack and stop having arguments with your wife and kids or stop going whatever because those people shouldn't be driving so anyway back to the story about my um sister's marriage you know we had I'm not surprised I forgave my brother-in-law for like you know everything he's ever done and the last thing that he did was have sex with a prostitute and I'm sorry but I'm just gonna say it out there the whole world I don't know like I don't really care um I'm probably gonna put this video on private anyway so this will be only shown to my close friends but yeah he had sex with a prostitute in Vietnam and then my sister brought it up with him in 2017 December and then he yelled at her in the car and you know what maybe he should have yelled at her in the car maybe she was creating so much stress for him she was trying to control his life she was trying to she was a psycho bitch and and maybe that's just the way an ESFJ person works you know I don't want to bring my breeds into this but I'm just saying like I've been bring, I've actually brought it in like 50 times so it's kind of ironic so I don't want to just say that my sister is a crazy bitch because maybe every ESFJ is like that maybe e every ESFJ has to have order and structure and rules and you have to go on time and you have to do this you have to behave perfectly you have to have integrity but but I feel like you know everything that she accused him of maybe she's got it herself she accused him of having narcissism she accused me of having bipolar because of the doctor's opinion because the doctor knows best um I think psychiatrists are pretty crazy people anyway I don't think they're normal um, not all psychiatrists like I might meet a nice psychiatrist one day but I'm just saying the psychiatrist that I met was crazy and then the doctor my personal doctor who lives near my house he was saying something to me you know psychiatrists are known for being weird are known for being the weirdos for being crazy they're a little bit not normal themselves and I thought you know what what a what a lovely opinion to have because at least it didn't it, it's it kind of supports my worldview that you know maybe the psychiatry industry isn't that great as it's perked up to be maybe the Scientologists are right about how they criticize putting medications into our bodies I really believe that you know I used to take LSD I used to take um, mushrooms and all of this and I tried weed and I tried cocaine and all of them I'd smoked before ice before and these are all just escapes and you know people like oh weed is a medicine LSD helps you uh, you discover yourself Steve Jobs took LSD and he became the owner of Apple you know what I don't care anymore I just want to get better um, yeah I could just go on and on but like let's just try to conclude this thing so I felt like my sister was in a bad marriage since the get-go and I feel like she should forgive her husband and she should move on she can sell the house if she wants to but I think she should seriously just not accuse him of terrible things anymore because she should take the responsibility that she chose him I'm sorry but if that's so offensive then I'll just I'll, I'll just not say it to her I'll just go say it on the TV screen on the webcam for YouTube to hear you're not gonna silence me I mean I'm not a political prisoner but I'm just trying to express myself if I can't express myself to her or to my parents and for fear of being persecuted or being accused of being bipolar and I need to take my medicine and I'm insensitive and I'm crazy and I'm this and I'm that and I'm not the Michael you we know and love then 
I just gonna express it on here. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry to anyone actually. I want to tell the truth. I want to tell my truth. I believe in the truth and I believe that the truth sets you free. And in Jordan St. Peterson's book that he said, you know, when you shove a lie under the carpet, under the rug, it's just going to get bigger and bigger. And then when you don't face the demon, it's just going to consume you and envelop your whole subconscious mind and take you down with it. And that's not me. You know what? My sister can drink as much as she wants. She can drink alcohol. I tried to sister. She could try to, you know, she could binge drink every weekend and she can go and smoke secretly hiding it from my parents. I don't care anymore. I'm, I, I, I choose not to care. You know, I do care, but I choose to care less. I actively choose to avoid her when she is being self-destructive. I have no interest in it. And she can, she can support it as much as she wants. She can say, oh, drinking for normal, drinking for what? Drinking, drinking for social. You know what? In Islam, people don't drink. In teetotalism, people don't drink. In Alcoholics Anonymous, people don't drink. And I'm one of these people. I'm one of these people who follow and abide by the rules of never going to drink again. Because I've stopped taking drugs. I've stopped smoking. I've stopped drinking. And if that means I have to tell people the truth to feel good, then I'll tell people the truth. Because that the truth will set you free. And this is my truth to you guys. Thank you.